So our scripture passage today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 26. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them that they would be able to hear it. But he did not speak to them except in, he did not speak to them except in parables. But he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so last week was my first Sunday as your uh, sole pastor, and I committed uh, to being as your pastor to see all of the members as worthy as um, loved, as gifted, and as creative. Now what I mean by that is we're all worthy of the life that we have and all the gifts that come with that, that we're all loved by God more than we can realize, that we're gifted to live the life that we have in only the way that we can live it, and that we're creative. Now I want to ask you, how many of you think of yourself as creative? Just raise your hand. You know, that's not everybody in the room. Often we leave creativity to the artists, but I am committed as your pastor to see you as creative, and we'll talk more about that. So I have with me today the very first sermon that I ever preached. I'm having a really hard time seeing today. Um, uh, I wrote it, uh, I gave it June the 15th, 1996. 1996, that's quite a ways, of, ways back. Um, I gave it for a seminary class uh, on preaching. Um, it was at Emory University, Candler School of Theology, and I remember thinking, that this was the best sermon I would ever give. This was the best sermon I could possibly produce. It was like one sermon for the whole semester, so I'd worked on it for quite a while, and that was the very best of that passage that had ever been preached. And so I am preaching today on the very same text that I preached that time. Uh, the parables that I read just now is the text that I used. I'm not going to read this to you. I'm not going to preach this because, yeah, it's really not the very best I've ever given. <laughs> it has some interesting things, and I, I was glad to reread it. But uh, on a day of first, a week, a month of first, I thought I would revisit this passage and take a different look at it uh, for you today. Often, um, as a pastor of a church that is progressive, People want to know what that means. What does it mean to be a progressive Christian? So one of my uh, important things that I always tell people is that, well, one of the things that a progressive Christian finds important is the way that we read the Bible. We don't take things literally. So, what, so how do we take things? Well, we take them metaphorically and with, you know, a lot of modern interpretation and we uh, we use, you know, our lives, we use um, all the soup of interpretation is thick, 
And uh, that's quite different than reading it literal. And I've been told by people that my way of seeing the Bible is wrong because it's not the most common. I've been, I've been told, well, surely that's, surely the way you see it, you're, you're reading it is not the way it was intended to be read. The Bible is not, in, surely it's not really meant to be read with such flexibility. But in fact, the passage today shows us the real creativity of Jesus in reading the Bible, in interpreting scripture, and in presenting a message of the kingdom of God. So we have um, two parables given by Jesus, and it, Jesus is so creative. You can just imagine that Jesus is walking along and says, well, the kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like that, the kingdom of God is like this, and he just grabs whatever is right there. And that's the great thing about progressive Christianity, is we bring our, we bring our creativity to the text. It's not just literal so we have as a model of, from Jesus this creativity. So the passage is that Jesus walks along and he, sees, he probably sees a, a field. And he says, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who sows his seed. He gets up night and day to see how it's growing. And then when it's uh, time for harvest, he is amazed. And he has a sense of awe at how this has happened. Even though he was there, for every step of the way and watched it grow, he is still astonished that he has wheat to harvest. So the kingdom of God is like that. And then Jesus is walking on along and he sees, you know, maybe he sees in that same field um, a weed. In fact, it's a mustard plant. And he tells another story. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The smallest of seeds turns into this big bush. Well, in truth, mustard seed is in, uh, most often uh, a weed, and it can overtake, and it can just outrun every, uh, everything else that's around it. Reminds me of kudzu from where I'm from that can just take over. Uh, so mustard seed kind of has that feel of just taking over, and you kind of kind of contain it, and no one would really plant it in their garden. Um, and so Jesus is just probably walking along, picking up things from his life and saying creatively, the kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like that, and like that. So I want to say to you that as children of God, as your pastor, I want to give you the liberty to be creative when you're thinking about faith. So in other words, walk through your life and say, God is like this. The kingdom of God can be like that. My faith can be this. Pull in all the things of your life and theologize about them. Be free with that. Be creative. You are creative. You don't have to know how to draw. You don't have to have Kimberly's beautiful voice. You are more creative than you realize. Just be free with it. Here's an example. I want, I'm going to tell you a story. And as I'm telling the story, I want you to hear it theologically. I want you to hear it as a religious story, okay? My father is quite the uh, gardener. We have a very big garden, always had a very big garden. Um, and as time went by, as the years went by, he didn't just want to plant plants. He wanted to plant a particular plant and make it the very biggest and the best it could possibly be. So he would go through different, uh, different cycles, like, you know, Every summer, we would plant 200 tomato plants a year. I know that's a lot of tomatoes. Uh, but we would plant all kinds of uh, things. And one year, he grew a really big tomato, and he was so proud of that. But you know what? That didn't get a lot of attention. One tomato, right, that's really big. That didn't get a lot of attention. So he mailed off for world, uh, world-sized um, watermelon seeds, seeds from the largest watermelon in the world. He mailed off for those seeds, because that would be really big, right? That should get a lot of splash, right? So he mailed for, uh, off for these seeds. He got the seeds, and he's really careful. He plants them when it's still cold out. He plants them in the little planters and puts them under a heat lamp, and uh, he cares for them. He has a whole row of them, and then he has a special place in the garden to plant them. 
not close to the edge where the deer might eat them, and not in the area that is known for having a lot of crabgrass. He puts it in the very best spot of his garden. Are you getting this theologically? Are you getting it? Just checking in with you, because this is a theological story. Okay, so he plants it in the very best spot of his garden. And um, he doesn't just plant them. As they grow, he, he, he picks off every single bloom except one and, and allows that one fruit per vine to grow. Now, that's not enough because, you know, he wants that big watermelon. That's not enough. He takes gallon jugs and he fills them with miracle grow and he pokes holes in the bottom of them, and he sets them right by the root of that tomato plant so that it gets not just water, but like high-power water, right? And that one, one watermelon grows, and it grows, and it grows, nurtured by my father every single day. He goes out there and checks on it, walks by it, nurtures it, waters it, cares for it, kicks everything off of it so it gets the most sun, and it grows and it grows and it grows to a 110-pound watermelon. Do you know how big that is? That's like really big. I mean, he had all of his grandkids sitting on that watermelon for the photo time. I mean, it is so big that the paper comes out and takes a picture of it. It makes the Troy Messenger paper local, you know, no, I don't know that paper, but it's local paper in Troy. It makes the paper, and when we cut that watermelon open, the heart of the watermelon is as big as a normal size watermelon. It was so much watermelon. <laughs> yeah, it's a big family, so we had plenty to eat, but we needed it for that big of a family. But he was so proud of that watermelon and all that he had done came to fruition to a 110-pound watermelon. Do you hear how that's a religious story? God plants each one of us with that same care, if not more care, than what my father can do. We're simple in comparison with the complexity of God. God cares for us, nurtures us, waters us, and is so proud of our lives. Now, that's just one story that I turned into a religious story. Now, the truth is, and what Jesus shows us with his creativity, is that when we break open our creativity religiously, every story that we have is a religious story. Every encounter we have, everything in this world is a religious story. If we break open our creativity and just see the world in the way that Jesus modeled it for us. Now we say every story, everything that happens. Are you serious? How can that be? There's real darkness in the world. We have seen way too much of it in this particular week. It's one thing to tell a story about a great big watermelon and, you know, God watching, comparing God to the farmer. But where is God in a shooting? Where is God in the tragedy of this week? That is one reason I am so thankful to be a Christian I believe a lot of different faiths have amazing truths. But I am so thankful to be a Christian because our image is of a cross. We know what suffering is about. Jesus would say, look at what power and prejudice did to me. And yet, love lives here as well. When we break open our creativity that is so ingrained in us, there is nothing that cannot be interpreted theologically. There is no place that is outside of the realm of this creative way of interpreting. 
Saint Anselm, he wrote a poem once that read like, reads like this. We go forth, I know, I really don't want to have to do this. Uh, we go forth to wonder at the heights of mountains, the huge waves of the sea, the broad flow of the rivers, the vast compass of the ocean, the courses of the stars, and then pass by ourselves without wonder. We go to the heights of everything and are astonished and are amazed but we ourselves are part of that amazing, creative, theological, amazing ingredients that God has created in this kingdom of God. So we are creative by our very nature. So we don't need to take faith so literally, literal interpretation, Rather, we need to free, just as Jesus did, free ourselves to find religion and faith everywhere. Everywhere. So I want to close to go back to my sermon of so many years ago. And I will read the very last paragraph, if that's okay with you. It's a little bit different message, but it hints on it, on this creativity. Now look back at your personal garden. Do you see those weeds? Do you see those unkept places in your life? Places you don't pay much attention to? Surprise, there may, that may be where the, place, uh, the very place of the kingdom of God. We must keep on the lookout and be ready or the kingdom of God will brush right past us without us aware. The signs that are all around us are really in plain view and can take our breath away. It may be the smile of a child, a sun ray shining through the clouds, mold on a piece of bread, and even a lowly carpenter called Jesus. That's the ending of my very first sermon. <laughs>